Hello, fellow gardeners. Well, we're coming to you with our devotion this morning. You know, we had uh, one here the other day about uh, the prodigal son that he he just didn't like having to work for his father and all, and he decided he'd just asked his father if he could have his portion of his of his money while he was still alive. He wanted to go and live his life, and the father gave it to him, and he went out and he <clears throat> he squandered his money living a wicked life. And then the recession came on and things got tough and his friends all forgot him because they, he didn't have any more money so they quit being friends with him and so he had to go get a job uh, with a farmer feeding pigs. And while he's out there feeding these, pi these pigs, he had repentance in the pig pen. That's what the title of this lesson is. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so we'll, we'll, we'll bow our heads and we'll pray here for a minute. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come to you at this time and we just want to thank you for being our Father, for paying uh, the price for us for our sins <clears throat> by Jesus coming to this earth and dying for our sins. And Father, we all have the same opportunity to call upon you to forgive us of our sins. And this is what the prodigal son was fixing to do. He's working out there in a dirty pig pen. And for Father, just be with us now as we study this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're talking about the repentance in the pig pen, and we're going to read in Luke 15, 17, 18, and 19. And when he came to himself, he said, he's here in the pig pen, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and here I am perishing with hunger. He was thinking about back home, how good he did have it, but how many of the hired hands was eating good and had plenty to eat. And so he said, I will go and uh, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you to thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He thought, well, I'll just go home and tell my father I'm sorry. Make me a servant. I don't need to be a son. Just make me a servant. I've got to earn your love back. I've got, I've got to show you that I want to be part of you now. And this is the only thing I can do is just go home because I know the place I can get food. And so this is what we're studying about today. He's thinking about it in that pig pen. I want to go home. It was so much better. When people lose everything and are virtually starving to death, even the most stubborn heart finds itself subdued. You know, and that's the way we are, folks. We, we want to turn from God. We just keep wanting to do our own wicked ways until something happens. Uh, we either have an accident or get sick or something, and they lay us down on our back in the bed. We're down at our lowest point, and then what do we do? We usually think about God, and we go to him in prayer. And this is what the son has done. Now, he's out there in his pig pen, and eating uh, pig slop or about the only thing he had was carrot beans, I think. But the, even then, the mind was still hold out in rebellion. You know, there was Ephraim and Samaria, despite having run out of hope, still traveled the road of rebellion. They continued to refuse to submit to God. They asserted in pride and arrogance of heart. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with smooth stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will rebuild, uh, but we will re replace them with cedars. And that was in Isaiah 9, 9 and 10. You can go study about that, uh, about how some other people were stubborn. Now, the prodigal son did not surrender to God until he found himself in a miserable, miry pig pen and had nothing to eat but pods from the carob tree. Why did so many sinners have to plummet? Why do so many sinners? have to plummet to the bottom of the pit before they look up. He had wasted his time, possessions, and even his life at that point. Sin is the most expensive commodity available. Even his life at that point, uh, let me get where I can see, sin is the most expensive commodity available, destroying us mentally, physically, and morally. It withers our finer feelings until we, like Samson, find ourselves sworn of our own spiritual looks, locks. 
Uh, sin is like the detective who found the criminal who was searching for. He joined the criminal in his thievery, and after gaining his confidence, convinced the thief to try on a pair of handcuffs, which he then snapped shut. The detective had his prey. Sin also captures this prey. Thank God the prodigal son finally looked up and began to think of his father's home. Soon he had his speech of repentance rehearsed. I can just see him out there in the pig pen, rehearsing and rehearsing, coming home and tell his father he is so sorry he wants to be a hired servant. And so, too ashamed to let himself be taken back as his son, he thought he would ask for a job as a hired servant. At least he would get decent food, even if his father no longer considered him a son. Then comes the grand reunion, something totally expected by the son, who didn't understand his father's character. Because he operated on the principle of salvation by works and not faith in his father's love, he assumed that he had to buy that love back. We misinterpret God because we don't understand his heart of love. This parable, if it teaches us anything, reveals what kind of God we serve. He will not hold our sins against us if we acknowledge and reject them. We must forsake them. And he doesn't hold them against us when we quit the, doing that sin. And we say, Father, forgive us. We have sinned against thee. God will never refuse forgiveness to the vilest sinner. Thank God for that. He will never refuse forgiveness to any of us. No matter how bad a sinner we have been, all we have to do is go to God and say, God, forgive us. And, we, and forgive me and then repent and quit doing that sin. Now, don't go back to it. And when you confess it and you forsake it, then Jesus wants to, God wants to forgive you. Christianity has the very heart of its teaching, uh, God's love and forgiveness. It is a God's power of forgiveness, his justification that pardons sinners and changes lives. And shall we not praise him by thanking him for his forgiving power? Folks, that's all we have to do is go to Jesus. Uh, go to God. Go to God. We're saved through Jesus' blood. We go to our Father and say, Father, forgive us for we have sinned. And then quit doing that sin. Repent from it. You don't want to do, keep doing that sin. Keep doing that sin. Now, the Father does say, if you do fall and you do fall back into that sin, you do it again, that he will still forgive you if you'll come back and repent again. It's amazing how God can forgive us and forgive us and forgive us because, remember now, we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. So every one of us are in the same boat. We're all sinners. We must come to God and ask forgiveness. And he says he's going to forgive you when you re return from that sin and sin no more. And so, Father, let's, uh, so let's do that for the Father. Let's love him so much and appreciate him for forgiving us our sins. Okay, friends, we, uh, we're going to pray now. And we thank you for being with us. And we pray that we can encourage you to study your Bible daily and find out what God wants you to do. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we just want to come to you and thank you for being our Father. We also want to thank you for what Jesus did by dying up on the cross that we might have eternal life with you by asking forgiveness of our sins. And we're all in the same boat. We have all sinned and come short of your glory. So Father, just forgive us, each and every one of us, at this moment and help us to forsake those sins. Don't do them anymore. Live for you. I know some of us are going to stumble and fall and we have to come back and ask it over again. But God says he will forgive you and forgive you and forgive you. So, Father, thank you for being with us like that. Thank you for being our loving Father, so kind and gentle and patient with us. And let us come unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, if uh, you enjoy this kind of devotion, Push the button, subscribe, and we'll come back and make you another one. Thank you.